Hello my soccer universe, it's the end of the Champions League group stage and I gotta say if it wasn't for the drama in group F I'm not sure I would be so excited about what we saw uh, over these past two days and maybe it's not bad that we'll have a little rejig for uh, next year where we have this big league maybe this will serve up a little bit more drama although I honestly doubt it uh, the group stage was best honestly in the 90s when there was only 16 teams because there were all good teams in there and yeah, but that's a discussion for a different video. But yeah, uh, we have the final places book. We have the draw coming up on Monday, not Friday, which I have thought is interesting as well. Talk a little bit about that as well, but I want to first go through the games group by group and we'll start on Tuesday, where honestly the best thing was the fight for the Europa League spot between Lens and Sevilla, because we had already PSV and Arsenal playing at the 1-1 draw. Uh, that was decided Arsenal first, PSV second. But will Sevilla go into the Europa League and probably defend the title will be lost. And I was also a little bit in the build-up that the French authorities actually uh, disallowed Sevilla fans to uh, be at the game because of recent troubles in Ligue 1, no away fans allowed. And the last fans said, you know, those guys have not only paid for the tickets, but also for travel and accommodation. If they're not allowed in the stadium, they can have our seats. Well, in the end, as far as I could see, Sevilla fans were allowed in the away section of uh, the Felix Bollea Stadium. But kudos to the Lance fans. That was a great gesture from your part. The game was actually, I mean, it was a hot atmosphere in Lance. The game was actually a relatively open affair. That turned a little bit on two penalties where I found both not quite sure uh, whether they will be given the 63rd. Frankowski converts for last to put them ahead and then uh, Sergio Ramos. There was a penalty which was a little, little bit clear for um, Sevilla. Sergio Ramos first sees his effort saved by the goalie. However, he was a little bit too much off the line and then uh, he lobs it into the net. And interest the goalie, which was, uh, you know, was not nice, but this was a typical Sergio Ramos action as, as well. It's 1-1 one, one, and Sevilla is pressing for the winner. Sergio Ramos himself could have converted the winner and sent uh, Sevilla to the Europa League. But then Filgini in deep in stoppage time makes it 2-1 uh, for Lars, who continue in Europe. And it's Sevilla, not in the Europa League. So we will have a different winner. But that was actually quite an exciting matchup I have to say. Uh, group A everything was not exciting at all. I mean, basically, uh, the big question is, will United really get totally eliminated from Europe? They needed to play against Bayern, they needed to win themselves, and then hope for a draw in the other game. And whenever you're hoping for a draw, it usually never happens, uh, because you're in a situation where a winner takes all. I don't think a draw would have happened there. And United didn't even do their homework. I mean, Bayern, without being outstanding, they just won it because they were better. It was a really poor showing by United and it's kind of staggering. I mean, conceding 15 goals in a group where you should cruise to second place at least is a really, really bad indictment for United. Uh, as I said, Kingsley Coman uh, wins it for Bayern. I think it was a relatively comfortable win for Bayern themselves. And then in the other game, it was then winner takes all, and the winner was Copenhagen. Uh, I think in the first half, Copenhagen started out nicely, but then uh, Galatasaray took, had a little bit more chance, but and it's a nicely assisted goal by Lea Aguirre, who can pull it in from short distance. Um, that sees Copenhagen going through, great atmosphere, the all-white stands. Loved that part, Lea Aguirre is a scent of uh, yellow-red. Uh, late in the game as well as Galatasaray were pushing for the equalizer but this was one, one of those you know, equalizer would not have helped uh, either although in this case with Bayern Wiener it would still have gone Copenhagen going on so that group is decided uh, in group C Napoli won their encounter with uh, Braga Braga actually uh, gave them much more of a fight than one would have expected uh, but they shot themselves a little bit self in the foot when Napolitano shot is uh, deflected by Sachi into his own net, you know, there was a crossbar in there, a bounce, uh, it was in there. And then uh, Braga were threatening, uh, probably had a little bit more of the game even. And then on the count, count Ignatan assists Ozyman, who stumbles it artistically. I think it's the best way to describe it, in tool to net. And that was the game. Napoli securing second spot behind Real Madrid and moving on. Yes, they were the second uh, best team in this group, most likely. However, Braga in both games uh, gave them quite the fight. 
Uh, with Braga's loss, a win of Union Berlin against Real Madrid would have sent them into the Europa League. A little bit unexpectedly, so one has to say. Uh, the game, of course, Real Madrid were uh, more controlling, although they had nothing to play for, to be honest, because, you know, already first uh, place secured. Uh, they missed a penalty through uh, Modric in the 4th, 45th minute, and then on the counter, Kevin Folland, uh, you know, Alaba falls over, and then Folland kind of gets the ball into net 1-0. And you think that the um, uh, surprise is on the cards. Uh, then Real Madrid turned, down, uh, th- uh, turned around through Jose Lu, scoring two goals in 61st and 72nd. Uh, at that point, Coach Bielica decides, yeah, we go all out. We bring on Kral, Becker, Laidoni to really put in an even and Ar- 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 Aronson. We need to get all the power forward and get the equalizer through uh, Alex Kral. But when they were going forward, uh, Bellingham assists Ceballos. 89th minute, Real Madrid win it, winning all games in the group. Real Madrid relatively comfortable in this group, one has to say. And then Group D was all about, uh, you know, first place Real Sociedad or Inter. Real Sociedad controlled possession and Inter a little bit uh, disappointing, I have to say, not going for the first place, which I'm not sure will uh, serve them well in the future. So Real Sociedad managed to finish first, and I think it is deserved because they were so much better than Inter in the first game. Uh, And if Inter don't do much uh, in the second, then, you know... You don't deserve finishing up in the Real Sociedad. A uh, really great performance, except for Sevilla, as we'll see, all Spanish team finished top of their groups, um, which is also a big statement of theirs. Uh, and then for the Europa League spot, Salzburg needed to avoid a two a defeat by two or more goals to secure the third spot. And while at the beginning they tried to be open, uh, Benfica were just a better team overall. Uh, Alex Schlager uh, had to make a few goal saves, but I really don't get it why you cannot avoid this defeat. I mean, Di Maria, an Olympic goal, a corner directly in, in, into the net and then uh, assisting Raf Rafa Silva to make it 2-0. Then Salzburg get themselves back in, into the game through Sucic. Scoring a goal and then, you know, Benfica need to op- open up and one of those counter-attacks, Koita puts in the net, however, it is deflected with an offside, so it doesn't count and then I just don't get it. I mean, yes, Schlager made some really great saves in there, but at Salzburg, the few counter-attacks that they had, they couldn't play them n- 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 nicer and then you're really caught off, uh, off, 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 off guard. When uh, I think it was again a ball, but Di, Di Maria, who of course it's Di Maria, he's one of the best players uh, of the last 10 years. Uh, lobs it over Arsenal, uh, plays it to Cabral, who had just come, come on as 3 1 4 or 4 Benfica, taking the life out of the stadium in Salzburg. I have, I have to say, it was a true gut punch because I would have expected the Salzburg team, although not great in the league and, and, and so on, to avoid that because they can hang with those big bigger teams but they were, were just too naive and maybe also not sure how to play this game whether they should be more on the offensive whether they should keep it tight i think they played so much better against the real sociedad where they also were out uh, fought and outshot and were the second best best team or also against inter uh this performance was rather disappointing especially on the back of the performance in lisbon where they won actually two nil so Salzburg completely out, out of here is not good for the Austrian Bundesliga at all, it has to be said. Because not only is this missing points for Austria, and this time Salzburg with only four, four points is rather disappointing. So Austria actually uh, falling down the ranking there. But it's also not good for the Austrian league because now you have more or less arrested Salzburg, who will go all out. Yeah, not, not digging that part. Let's go yesterday. The early games, I mean, Manchester City 3 2 at Chavena Svesta, it was a dead rubber. Same thing for Lyon, Leipzig against young, young boys. We don't need to talk about these two, two, two games because everything in this group was already decided. Uh, let's go Group E, where Atletico Madrid, a relatively easy win against Lazio 2 0. I think both teams, I mean, as soon as Griezmann gives the lead to, La, uh, to Atlet- Atletico, Lazio basically resigned to the fact, okay, Livia second, fine, fine. Hermoso goal is disallowed because there was an offside ahead of the goalie. And then uh, Samuelina early in the second, again, after six minutes, both times Atletico scored. It's dead. A um, bit disappointing. All Italian teams uh, that have uh, are once again in second place. We'll talk about Milan in a second. So, yeah, um, 
for in for a Lazio, I can understand they're they're not a great team. For Inter, that's maybe the big deal. This is why Napoli didn't have a shot at first place. Celtic get the first Champions League win in ages against Feyenoord late, although I think Feyenoord had a bit more of the, the game, but again, a game that did not really matter because, you know, Feyenoord were already a safe in uh, third place. Could not have been over, 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 taken the gather equalizer and then lay, lay down Celtic win it. But yeah, so be it. We're talking Group F. Um, that was basically, no, I'm talking now Milan perspective, but there were many um, per permutations. From Milan perspective, you needed to win, then you stay in Europe, and you needed to hope that Dortmund win against PSG to uh, actually uh, advance in second place. So that was kind of from my per perspective. But there was also um, Newcastle with a win. Uh, and PSG not winning actually would have advanced in second place. So that was also one. Uh, PSG needed a win, then they would get the group win. Uh, they would stay in second if they draw and Newcastle does not win. But they could only go in the Europa League, but at least they could not get eliminated. So many, many proper permutations there. And those games are kind of uh, were kind of wild because... Uh, Dortmund, if they lose, they're in second place, which is, of course, also not advantageous. And, of course, Dortmund really would have liked to beat PSG. Now, uh, before we go into the games, jersey matchups were really odd, on, on, honestly. I still don't get why yellow against white is an acceptable matchup in Dortmund. We saw it already against Milan, uh, and now we against uh, PSG, the same thing. I think if PSG give them white pants on their blue jerseys or what the world whatever i i don't get it yes i like those psg shirts honestly but yellow against white is not a proper matchup and while i also like the milan third kit yes i'm one of those that i really would like to have this and now i have it also confirmed since yesterday my girls want to have it and of course my wife want to have have it too so i guess we will make a big order from the milan store at one point um in the first game, Milan could play with the red shirt. And play with the red shirt and white, uh, white shorts with a classic Milan look that they had in, in the derby. I think you're fine. You don't need to dish out the pink, pink, uh, purple -ish thing. But hey, kid rules are probably selling some extra shirts because they have only worn them once so far. And spoiler alert, they won both games in these. But we're getting ahead of all for stuff. In Dortmund, the first half was absolutely nuts. Chances left and right. Probably more uh, tilting towards PSG. But Dortmund also had some good. So Marius Wolf, Marco Reus and so on. Uh, there was also an Mbappé surefire goal that uh, Süle really got just scrapes off the line by putting his foot high, you know, sliding in and then putting it. It was a really good, 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 good save there. But then also Cole Colmany trying to be too fancy uh, getting inside. And I think uh, Barcola uh, hitting the uh, post. It was crazy that this was only nil-nil at the half. I think Adiemi also had a big chance to missing. He actually makes up for it in the 51st minute to finally convert. One goal is one nil Dortmund. It's the result that I actually wanted to have uh, for Milan's sake. I was saying, yeah, Marie gets an equalizer. And then again, it is a PSG pushing and a goal from a Pepe is disallowed for offside. But the longer the game went on and the way that the game was developing in Newcastle, you could see that PSG said, we don't want to take the risk. And uh, at the end, they just kept the ball and wanted to avoid going all out and being caught on the counter-attack by Dortmund, which was disappointing to me because in Newcastle, Newcastle actually started well and Milan not. I mean, yes, there was one layout chance, but Newcastle created way more, more chances. There was a great tackle. It was, it was the uh, first half of great uh, um, saves. The one from Sule, the one from Tomori, where it was a surefire goal for New Newcastle if he, if he doesn't put, put his foot in there. Uh, but Newcastle take the lead through Joel Linton uh, and it was all deserved because Milan did not play well at all. And it was more of that in the second half when Newcastle actually controlled the game, had more chances and a little bit out of nowhere, but admittedly a really well played goal. 
puts Milan back on track. Pulisic scores the equalizer, but this was uh, it was a pass through Leao, who was not outside. Pull puts it back to Tomori, who plays to Giroud, who lays it off to Pulisic, who can pull, pull it in into net. And that was the point, and where it flipped. Yes, there was a great Mignon save in there that went on to, on to crossbar around many players. And yes, he cannot get his full hand hand there, but he gets enough hand on, 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 on to, to not be a goal. Absolutely crucial save. But then Newcastle is pushing forward because they know they have the result in Dortmund that they would like to have. And if they win it, they're actually through. And that allows Milan to hit them on the, on the counter leg. And I, I don't know why they didn't do this more in the first half. Uh, one of those uh, Rafael puts on the post, but then... Um, Piolo also smells a little bit blood, brings on Jovic, brings on Chukwes, brings on Okafor. Um, and one of those counter-attacks that Okafor actually starts, plays over to Chukwese, and it's 2-1 with his first touch, Chukwese turns the Genke game around. Big moment in the game. And then a little bit naive from New Newcastle to keep pushing forward, because honestly, Milan then should have killed it. I mean, Theo Hernandez has an open net, has Chukwese on his right, is not offside, who has a much clearer shot, and he, from the middle mid line, tries to roll it into net, which is never going to work. And that was maybe the one thing that Theo Hernandez uh, really annoyed me. Uh, and then I think Le Le Leon Chukwese again hits the, uh, the post. So, you know, could have been more for, for Milan. I think based on the second half, you showed that Milan was a more clever team, Newcastle, though, over and for for Professor would have uh, deserved a little bit more. But yeah, in this group, we have Milan going to the Europa League. PSG are through again in second place. And I honestly have to tell you, you're not winning the championships they're coming from second place most of the time. I mean, you can hope for a good draw, but who who hold you on a draw? We'll talk about that when we talk about the draw. Uh, and then we have Group F, where Barcelona, and I, I, I don't want to talk much about it, but they lose to Antwerp. You get the equalizer in the 91st minute. You had to take the big players because the president wanted to get the extra um, uh, money for getting a win in and 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 you lose in the 92nd minute. And probably deservedly so as well. So uh, Barcelona is probably a team that everyone at the moment wants to draw, most likely. In the other game, Porto in a goal fest, 5-3 of Schacht, Schacht, Donetsk. Uh, a Schacht team that just does, does, doesn't give up. I mean, it was, they got the 1-1 through Sikan, although it was really weird because the linesman had the uh, flag up, but the referee says play, plays on, uh, which completely con confused the Porto players. But, you know, Galeno then, just before the half, makes it 2-1 for Porto after scoring the open as well. Taremi, 3-1, but then an own goal, 3-2, then Pepe and Concesao uh, make it 5-5-2, but, you know, Equinaldo, 1-1 back Porto are uh, also through and so we know all the 16 teams let's look at the favorites before we look at the draw ahead ahead of draw it's Manchester City but now Real Madrid and Bayern Munich very very close together but still City despite not looking good Google the league they're still the high, most highly rated team Inter overtake Barcelona I would agree and then we have Arsenal uh, sitting in fourth place there and yeah, Atletico Madrid, Borussia Dortmund, you see PSG only in ninth place because they probably will get a tough draw for sure. And let's talk about the draw. As I said, it will happen on Monday. Uh, we have very little restrictions. The only thing is that Leipzig, because it's very country blocks, uh, only Leipzig is a German team that finished in second spot and we have two German teams in first spot. We have only two English teams advancing. The other two are completely out of uh, out of here, which puts a big spanner if the Premier League wanted to get this fifth Champions League spot, whereas Italy's everyone still is in Europe. That is an interesting fact, one has to say. Uh, same thing for Spain except for Sevilla. So Italy uh, will make points uh, probably easier than, for instance, England will, although England can win all three competitions. Can they win all three competitions? Yeah, they could, they could win uh, theoretically all three competitions. Now... I think of the group winners, all of them will look at Copenhagen or probably PSV Eindhoven uh, as uh, teams that they would like to see. But I want to actually look at the PSG uh, and Napoli Inter perspective. Which are the teams from part one that you would like to have? Real Sociedad? Not really. Although it's probably the team Dortmund, potentially. But Dortmund have been good in Champions League. Barcelona, I think those are the three teams because everyone else... That's basically your rank outsiders. Doesn't mean that you cannot do anything. But that's why I really don't get why Inter didn't want to win that group, honestly. And same thing for PSG. But hey, that's it. As I said, draw is on Monday. 
and then we'll know a little bit more and it will be in interesting how this draw will go <laughs> now collection note i don't have a copenhagen georgia jersey but i have 15 out of the 16 i will come cock off there i don't think the copenhagen will go much further given the teams that they can play and also the other game cock opening that would be an interesting one i have to say any case that was it from me from the champions league uh let me know what you thought about the games i said i think group f saved it and you could make some drama here and here here there like salzburg benfica or Lens against sevilla but other than that it was rather meh overall but let's hope that the uh Norka stages will serve us up some drama although this last year they last season they really didn't but in any case i still champions league is still the best of the best so i don't want to make a big too too big of a down in any case give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel want to see more and i'll talk to you soon bye hey there i really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too also please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe and with that have a wonderful day bye